Hello and welcome to our instructional series about algorithmic trading with the FXCM REST API using Python. My name is Charlie Graves and I will be your guide as we learn more about coding algorithmic trading strategies with the Python programming language. In this multi-part series, we will dive in depth into how algorithms are created. In part one of this series, we will begin by connecting to the REST API followed by pulling historical data and then subscribing to live pricing. In part two, we will build an algorithmic trading strategy from the ground up that will place trades in real time. And in part three, we will backtest and optimize this strategy using historical data. As we go along, be sure to subscribe in order to get updates on our latest video releases. Okay, let's get started. In order to use the FXCM REST API, you first need to generate an access token. To do that, you can register for a free practice account on fxcm.com by clicking practice account in the upper right hand corner. From there, you'll be able to fill out your information and click on the trade now button to generate your username and password. Once you've generated your username and password, you'll want to navigate to tradingstation.fxcm.com so that you can access the web platform. Enter your username and password here and click on Sign In. Once you do, you'll be presented with this screen. To generate your access token, click on your username in the upper right hand corner and then on Token Management. Enter your password one more time and click on Generate Token and you'll be presented with your REST API access token. Now that we have our REST API token, we'll want to launch a Jupyter Notebook so that we can begin coding. To do that, you'll open your Anaconda prompt and you'll want to type in Jupyter space Notebook. This will launch a Jupyter Notebook in your web browser. If you don't have Jupyter Notebooks or if you need help installing Python or Anaconda, we have another video series that will allow you to do that. Next, click on New and then Python 3 for a new Python 3 Notebook I have one that's prepared specifically for this, so we'll use that one for now. The first step in connecting to the REST API is to import the various libraries that we'll need. First, we'll import pandas. This allows us to store our historical data in a data frame, which makes working with large amounts of data much easier. Next, we'll import JSON, which allows us to encode and decode packets of information that are sent to us via the REST API web server. Then we'll import requests, which allows us to communicate with the REST API server. And finally, we'll import Socket.io. This allows for real-time communication between us and the web server and allows us to authenticate and subscribe to data. I'm going to hit Shift Enter here to run the cell above, and it ran without any type of error, so that means we imported everything properly. Now that we've imported the required libraries, we need to define our static connection information. First, we'll enter the URL for the REST API server. Note that this is for the demo environment. You can find the live environment in the documentation. We'll then code our WebSocket port. And finally, we'll enter in the access token that we generated from the trading platform earlier. Our next task will be to code out our definitions for our Socket IO events. These will let us know when we connect or disconnect via print statements, which is always useful whenever you're debugging. The first method we're going to create is onConnect, and we're going to have that print WebSocket connected along with our session ID. Next, we'll create the onClose method, and this method is simply going to print WebSocket disconnected. Next, we'll initialize our socket IO object, and we're going to use the parameters that we created earlier, and we're going to pass along our trading API URL, we're going to pass in the WebSocket port, and finally, as a parameter, we're going to pass in our access token. After this, we're going to initialize our event definitions, and we're going to call on those methods that we created earlier. For connect, we're going to call onConnect. For close, we're going to call onClose. Close. 
the last step here is to create our bearer access token. As mentioned before, we'll use the access token anytime that we make a request to the server. And the access token is a combination of the session ID and our access token that we generated earlier. So let's print out the bearer access token to see if we were successful. I'm going to run the code in this cell by hitting shift and enter at the same time. And as you can see, a bearer access token was generated, which means that we have authenticated. Now that we've authenticated with the server, let's do something useful like pull historical pricing data. The first step is to define what type of data we'd like to pull. You can find all of the specifics for this in our documentation, which is located on our GitHub. But for this video, we're going to pull the candle data, which means historical data. We're using one, which is the code for EURUSD, and H1 stands for tick frequency. We're pulling historical tick data for the euro dollar. Next, we're going to send our request using the get method. In this request, we will append the method we just created to trading API URL to specify the type of data that we want to pull. Per the documentation, we're also going to send the proper headers, including our bearer access token. And for the parameters, we're going to enter the number of ticks and the to and from dates. These dates might look a little weird. They're in a different format than you might be used to, but the documentation explains everything. We should now have a large packet of data stored in HistResponse. First, let's see whether we were successful. We can find that out by printing HistResponse. If we receive 200, it means we were successful. If we receive 400, it means there was an error. As you can see, we received 200, so we were successful. Now let's see what data was sent back. Here, we'll use JSON to decode the information sent back to us. As you can see, we were able to retrieve a large amount of data. However, it's very difficult to read and would be even more difficult to manipulate in any meaningful way in its current form. So let's clean it up. The best way to make this data easier to read and manipulate is to put it inside of a data frame, which is where Pandas comes in. First, let's test to make sure that we received a successful request by checking for a status code of 200. If it was received properly, then we'll print out data retrieved. Next, we'll create a variable called histData, and we're going to place all of the data inside of this variable. From there, we're going to extract just the candle data. Finally, we're going to use pandas to create a data frame. We're going to store the candle data inside of this data frame. We'll also check to make sure that we received a successful response, and if we didn't, we'll use the else statement to print out the error message. Let's take a look at what this data looks like now. We'll print out the data frame. As you can see, it is much more organized and much easier to read. We have everything in a column layout, and we have all the data that we need. Now, as we look at the top, we can see that the columns don't tell us much about what the data underneath is, and the time field looks a little off. To correct this, let's first address the columns. To change the columns, we'll use df.columns to define the new values for the columns in the data frame. By printing the data frame, we can then see that this change has taken place. Next, we need to address the time column. As it stands, this column is currently in epoch time. Luckily, pandas has a built-in function that will allow us to convert this to something that's quite a bit easier to read. So we're going to take the time column specifically, and we're going to use the function to date time, and we're going to change the time column to the unit s. We'll print that out again, and we can now see that the time column is in a much easier to read format. Now that we've pulled historical prices, 
which are useful for backtesting and optimizing strategies, let's learn how to pull live prices, which would be required to have a strategy that will trade live in the market. As we did before, we'll first specify which type of pricing we'll be using. In this case, our method value is set to slash subscribe. We'll use a post request to send the trading API URL and append our method, similar to how we had done previously. We'll send the same headers. However, instead of sending parameters, this time we'll be sending the currency pair we want to subscribe to. In this case, we've specified the EURUSD currency pair. Now that we've defined the connection, let's print out the response code and the data that we received. As you can see, we were successful in our request, and we received a single real-time price for the EURUSD. Pulling a single rate at a time can work. However, it's not ideal. What we're really after for algorithmic trading systems is getting updates as soon as they're available. So as a final step, let's create a new Socket.io definition for an event that will print out the updated prices whenever a new tick is released. First, we'll define the function for printing out prices called onPriceUpdate. It'll take a message, decode it using JSON, and then print that message. Next, we'll create a subscription using Socket.io to the EURUSD tick data. First, we'll check to make sure we're still receiving successful requests. We'll then specify that we are interested in EURUSD pricing while calling on the onPriceUpdate function to print the price updates. Finally, we'll subscribe to EURUSD ticks using Socket.io.wait. We'll execute this code and, oh, looks like I left out an equal sign, so we'll put that back in, execute the code and, we are now getting streaming price updates. And that's all there is to it. We've now successfully authenticated with the REST API server, we've pulled historical pricing data, and now we're streaming live pricing data. It's that easy. If you have any questions, we're always here to help. FXCM's GitHub page contains the full documentation for our REST API, a fully commented version of this Jupyter notebook, sample code, real case studies, and more. Additionally, if you're ever in the need of guidance, you can always reach us by emailing api at fxcm.com. In our next video, we'll be coding an example of a simple strategy that reads in live prices and places trades. After that, we'll build a back tester so that we can optimize our example strategy using historical pricing, so be sure to subscribe to get notifications about our latest instructional videos. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.